The Feast of Divine Mercy Sunday takes place each year on the Sunday after Easter Sunday and it was instituted by Pope St. John Paul II in the year 2000. However, it was asked for by the Lord Jesus himself through the visions and messages he gave through sister, now Saint Faustina, a Polish nun who died in October 1938. In the past 20 years, the message, image and feast of Divine Mercy have spread more and more throughout the entire church, so that many parishes all over the world now have a copy of the Divine Mercy image on display for veneration and will celebrate or mark the feast day of mercy in some special way. At the heart of the Gospel read at Mass on Divine Mercy Sunday, we find the wounds of Jesus. The risen Lord shows forth his risen body to the disciples, but he shows that that risen and glorified body of his still carries the marks of crucifixion. His hands, his feet and his side retain their open wounds. Jesus had many wounds when he died on the cross on Good Friday, but he chose to keep just five of those wounds, his principal wounds, when he rose from the dead. One reason why Jesus rises with his wounds is so that we might remember and appreciate more fully the price paid for our salvation. Additionally, and I would say more importantly, those open wounds, especially his pierced side and heart, urge us to take note that the merciful heart of our Lord remains open for us and that we can at any time be confident that the Lord will pardon us if we come to him with even the smallest ounce of repentance. St. Paul urges us to this kind of confidence, this trust in God's desire to be merciful, when he tells us in his letter to the Romans, chapter 5, Having died to make us righteous, is it likely that he would now fail to save us from God's anger? When we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, we were still enemies. Now that we have been reconciled, surely we can count on being saved by the life of his Son. The wounds of Jesus are, I think, encouragements to never despair of the Lord's mercy. Indeed, Jesus spoke of his wounds in this way when he said to St. Faustina, From all my wounds, like streams, mercy flows for souls. But the wound in my heart is the fountain of unfathomable mercy. From this fountain spring all graces for souls. The flames of compassion burn me. I desire greatly to pour them out upon souls. Speak to the whole world about my mercy. It is on this special feast day that the saving wounds of the risen Jesus are placed before us in the Gospel at Mass. And it is on this day that the Lord Jesus asks us to come and venerate an image, the Divine Mercy image, in which we see those wounds in the risen Lord, an image and wounds which invite us to have confidence, to trust that having died to save us, Christ will not abandon us in our sins. Jesus, I trust in you, is the inscription beneath the image, and that phrase is not meant to be a nice invocation, but a way of living out our faith in Christ Jesus. This special feast day has several components to its celebration. Jesus asks St. Faustina to make efforts to have the Sunday after Easter declared as the Feast of Mercy. Those efforts culminated in the fact that at her canonization in the year 2000, St. John Paul II declared that from now on, the Sunday after Easter would be Divine Mercy Sunday. About this feast, 
Jesus told St. Faustina, I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which graces flow are opened. Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. Confession and Holy Communion are therefore essential components to celebrating the feast day well and obtaining the maximum graces we can from celebrating this day. Since the promises Jesus gives for those who celebrate the Feast of Mercy lie in the realm of private revelation, the Church, under Pope John Paul's direction, has attached a plenary indulgence to the celebration of this feast to reinforce that even though the devotion is a fruit of private revelation, it has the full endorsement and approval of Mother Church, who deeply desires to encourage her faithful children to approach with confidence the merciful Jesus and obtain mercy and restoration of soul. Of course, the opportunity for the required confession might not be available to everyone on the Feast of Divine Mercy itself, and so it may be made shortly before or after Divine Mercy Sunday. Though in the midst of the pandemic restrictions imposed upon us, the possibility of getting to confession soon might not be so readily available to us. And since getting to Mass and Holy Communion is difficult or impossible for so many given the COVID-19 restrictions, then that component may also have to be delayed. Even so, we should stir up in ourselves a desire for communion with the Lord and make a good act of spiritual communion. Of course, it isn't the same as actually receiving Holy Communion, but the Lord sees the desires of our heart. And the same is true of our inability to get to confession. We should ask the Holy Spirit to give us the grace of perfect contrition. We should make an act of contrition and resolve to get to the sacrament of confession as soon as we can. Once again, the Lord will see the good will in our hearts. And so we can still receive most, if not all, the benefits of this great feast day, even if it proves impossible for the time being to fulfill all the requirements that are attached to the Divine Mercy Sunday. But Jesus also said that the feast must be accompanied by merciful deeds. He said, Yes, the first Sunday after Easter is the Feast of Mercy, but there must also be acts of mercy. So we should find some practical way of accomplishing a deed of mercy. Given that so many are isolated, sheltering in place, cocooning because of the pandemic, going out to carry out physical deeds of mercy might not be that possible for you right now. So, very, so a very simple way within the reach of us all is to pray a little for the holy souls in purgatory. They are most in need of our charity and our compassion. Let us beg God's mercy for them. Jesus has also requested that the image of divine mercy be solemnly blessed and publicly venerated on this feast day. Many, for the second year in a row, will not be able to join in a public gathering of the faithful for the veneration of the image of the merciful Jesus. So perhaps joining a live-streamed celebration might be the only viable option. Once again, the Lord sees the desires of our hearts. This image is special for a number of reasons. Firstly, because it depicts the apparition which St. Faustina had of Jesus and is, as best as an artist can do, an accurate 
representation of how he appeared. But most importantly, the image is special because of what the Lord Jesus has said about it. He told Faustina, Paint an image according to the pattern you see, with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. I am offering people a vessel with which they are to keep coming for graces to the fountain of mercy. That vessel is this image with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. By means of this image, I shall grant many graces to souls. So, while great graces are attached to the public veneration of the image on the Feast of Mercy, Jesus doesn't limit the outpouring of grace to that day alone. Each and every day, in the privacy of our own homes, we can and should venerate the image of the merciful Jesus. The image is important because it is a visual representation of so much of what the Lord Jesus wishes to reveal about his merciful attitude towards us. In the image, he steps towards us. Behind him, there is darkness, but around him and from him, there is light. It is as though Christ is entering, driving out the darkness that surrounds us. In our darkness, he is walking towards us. He is not afraid of that darkness, he who is the light of the world. And his right hand is raised in blessing, much like the hand of the priest is raised when giving absolution. Obviously, the greatest darkness in us would be the sin which dims the light of glory placed by the Holy Spirit in our souls at baptism. A soul in mortal sin dwells in a sort of interior darkness. But all it must do is turn to the merciful Lord and he can and will restore it to light, peace and grace. This he does supremely in the sacrament of penance. In the image, Christ's left hand seems to open the garment he is wearing at the breast to allow us see the grace which flows from the wound on his heart. And from that heart issues two rays of light, one red and one pale. About these rays, Jesus explained to Faustina, the two rays denote blood and water. The pale ray stands for the water which makes souls righteous. The red ray stands for the blood which is the life of souls. These two rays issued forth from the very depths of my tender mercy when my agonized heart was opened by a lance on the cross. These rays shield souls from the wrath of my Father. Happy is the one who dwells in their shelter, for the just hand of God shall not lay hold of him. Jesus also explains, My gaze from this image is like my gaze from the cross. And we know that the gaze of the Lord on the cross was one of mercy. For looking at the very ones who were nailing him to the cross, insulting and mocking him, he said, Father, forgive them. In giving us this image, this feast day, and the powerful chaplet of divine mercy, through which he desired to grant unimaginable graces, Jesus is trying to communicate that which he himself tells us is impossible for us to fully grasp. About his divine mercy he has said, Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. My mercy is so great 
that no mind, be it of man or of angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. No mind of man or angel will be able to fathom the divine mercy of our God should they spend all eternity diving deeply into it. They will never, ever understand it completely because it is infinite mercy, infinite merciful love. Jesus wants us to absolutely trust him and to trust in his loving mercy upon us. He wants no one to despair of his forgiveness and no one to ever think that, that they or anyone else is beyond redemption. There is more mercy in him than there are sins in all of us combined. If you think, ever have thought, or ever will be tempted to think in the future that you or someone you care about are a lost cause beyond redemption, then this devotion is for you. St. Faustina had learned well from Jesus, and so she wrote in her diary, Where a person like a decaying corpse, and from a human standpoint there is no hope and everything seemed lost, it is never so with God. The miracle of divine mercy can restore it. Let no soul, even the most miserable, fall prey to doubt, for as long as one is alive, each one can become a saint. So great is the power of God's grace. Jesus tells Faustina that the greatest sinfulness of soul does not arouse wrath in him, but arouses in his heart a great compassion for the sinner. St. Faustina was given to understand how moved with compassion the Lord is when he encounters a sinful soul, and how great is his desire to save us from our sins, even in the final moments of an otherwise sinful life. She wrote in her diary these words, All grace flows from mercy, and the last hour abounds with mercy for us. Let no one doubt concerning the goodness of God, even if a person's sins were as dark as night, God's mercy is stronger than our misery. One thing alone is necessary, that the sinner open the door of his heart, be it ever so little, to let in a ray of God's merciful grace, and then God will do the rest. Pope St. John Paul II has some important words to tell us about no sinner being a lost cause. Words that he spoke on his visit to Ireland in 1979. He said, because of Christ's love and mercy, there is no sin that is too great to be forgiven. There is no sinner who will be rejected. Every person who repents will be received by Jesus Christ with forgiveness and love. Hear that again. Every person who repents will be received by Jesus Christ with forgiveness and love. Jesus gives us this devotion, not because we are great saints, but because we are sinners whom he wants to make great saints. He has said to St. Faustina, The greater the sinner, the greater the right he has to my mercy. I cannot punish even the greatest sinner if he makes an appeal to my compassion. So many people need to hear this, this message of hope, this encouragement to trust in divine mercy. You and I are called to be apostles of mercy. We should promote and spread this message. Our world has great need of it. And Jesus asks us to pray for the conversion of sinners. For he told Faustina that it, that is a prayer that is always heard and always answered. The prayer for the conversion of sinners. This is a truly beautiful feast day. And a truly beautiful devotion. 
it can and will change hearts and lives. It changed mine. I would like to bear witness to the power of this devotion in my own life. At a certain point in my life, I was trying to come back to the Lord after several years of living in, I suppose, a spiritual wilderness, up to my neck in sin. But a difficulty I had was that I couldn't really believe that the Lord would forgive me. One day in our cathedral, as I was walking out the door, a little booklet caught my eye. It had a picture of the face and heart of Jesus on it, the top half of the Divine Mercy image, though I didn't know it at that time. And it was a little book called Will You Help Me, as I recall. It was all about the Divine Mercy. And I took that book and I devoured its contents. And the message gave me the hope and trust to move on in my spiritual life. And it is a hope and trust in Divine Mercy which has never left me. Let us give thanks to Jesus for this great devotion. And let us venerate the sacred image. Let us pray for our intentions and especially for the great intention of the conversion of sinners because that intention lies heavy on the heart of Jesus. And that intention includes us all to some extent. May the wonders of divine mercy be accomplished in many souls through the church's celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday. Finally, I would like to tell you what Faustina saw when the first feast day of Divine Mercy was celebrated. It took place in Vilnius in Lithuania on April 28, 1935. As the image was publicly displayed, she saw the hand of the image move and make the sign of the cross over the people gathered there. As her spiritual director, Father Michael Sopochko, now blessed Michael Sopochko, as he spoke on the Lord's great and tender mercy, St. Faustina saw the image come to life and the rays from the heart of Jesus spread out over the congregation and penetrate into their hearts. Some received this grace more than others. And at the end, when the benediction was given with the Blessed Sacrament, she saw Jesus standing there and the rays of love and mercy from his heart filled all the people and extended out upon the whole world. This is what is happening at every celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday. It's what is happening at every celebration of the Mass. We do not see it, but immense graces miraculous graces even, are being poured out upon and offered to us and to so many others. Jesus himself has told us through St. Faustina that the graces we receive are only limited by the trust we have in him. The greater the trust, the greater the wonders divine mercy will work for us. He said, your great trust in me forces me to continuously grant your graces, you graces. Your great trust in me forces me to continuously grant you graces. How much power trust in Jesus has. It it is a great bucket that we can lower into the infinite deep well of grace and mercy that is the heart of Jesus. And with that trust, we can draw unimaginable graces for our good and the good of the world. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen.